Intoxic multinodular goiter, also called plumber's disease, toxic refers to something harmful, nodular refers to little lumps or nodules of tissue, and goiter refers to a large thyroid gland. So toxic multinodular goiter is a condition where the thyroid gland enlarges and is filled with lots of little nodules of tissue, each of which produces so much thyroid hormone that it becomes harmful to the body. Now, normally the hypothalamus, which is located at the base of the brain, detects low blood levels of thyroid hormones and releases thyrotropin-releasing hormone into the hypophysial portal system, which is a network of capillaries linking the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary then releases thyroid-stimulating hormone, also called thyrotropin, or just TSH. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland, which is a gland in the neck that looks like two thumbs hooked together in the shape of a V. The thyroid gland is made up of thousands of follicles, which are small spheres lined with follicular cells. Follicular cells convert thyroglobulin, which is a protein found in follicles, into two iodine-containing hormones, triiodothyronine, or T3, and thyroxine, or T4. Once released from the thyroid gland, these hormones enter the blood and bind to circulating plasma proteins. Only a small amount of T3 and T4 will travel unbound in the blood, and these two hormones get picked up by nearly every cell in the body. Once inside the cell, T4 is mostly converted to T3, at which point it can exert its effect. T3 speeds up the basal metabolic rate, so as an example, they might produce more proteins and burn up more energy in the form of sugars and fats. It's like the cells are in kind of a frenzy. T3 also increases cardiac output, stimulates bone resorption, which thins out the bones, and activates the sympathetic nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system that's responsible for our fight-or-flight response. That being said, thyroid hormone is important, and the occasional increase is kind of like getting a boost to fight off a hungry predator or to stay warm during a snowstorm. Toxic multinodular goiter usually starts with a chronic lack of dietary iodine, and follicular cells need iodine to make T3 and T4. With less iodine around, each follicular cell makes less thyroid hormone, and as a whole, the level of thyroid hormone goes down. In response to low levels of thyroid hormones, the anterior pituitary releases TSH. The high levels of TSH cause thyroid hypertrophy, which is the buildup in thyroid tissue and hyperplasia, which increases the number of follicular cells. Some parts of the thyroid gland are more responsive to TSH than others, so the growth ends up being uneven throughout the thyroid. Those responsive follicular cells start to grow quickly and develop into a nodule, and the rest of the gland ends up looking basically the same. Typically, multinodular goiter starts with a single nodule, and then over the years multiple nodules start to appear. This strategy works for a while and the thyroid is considered a non-toxic multinodular goiter. In other words, having more follicular cells makes up for the fact that each follicular cell makes less thyroid hormone. So the thyroid enters a balanced or euthyroid state. At this point, the TSH levels go down even though there's an iodine deficiency. But if that iodine deficiency worsens, there's another round of increased TSH which stimulates more thyroid growth. Over time, the thyroid gland goes through a ton of cycles of periods of growth and periods of balance. Now, a non-toxic multinodular goiter becomes toxic when a genetic mutation happens in one of the dividing follicular cells, in particular when the mutation affects the TSH receptor. If the mutation causes the TSH receptor to be constantly on, then the affected cell might constantly remain stimulated to divide and produce thyroid hormone. At this point, it develops into a toxic nodular goiter. Even when thyroid hormone levels rise and TSH production shut down, these independent nodules use any available iodine to make thyroid hormone, well beyond what the body wants or needs. The result is that cells across the body are in a state of hypermetabolism, where cellular reactions are constantly happening at a faster pace than normal. Symptoms of toxic multinodular goiter are related to the enlargement of the thyroid gland and to hyperthyroidism. The enlarged thyroid gland can put pressure on other structures in the neck, 
obstructing the airway and making swallowing difficult. It can also compress nerves like the superior or recurrent laryngeal nerves, which will make the voice sound hoarse. It can cause superior vena cava syndrome by limiting blood flow in the superior vena cava, which results in facial and arm swelling because blood gets backed up in the veins of the head and upper body. Hyperthyroidism causes weight loss despite an increase in appetite because of the higher basal metabolic rate, as well as heat intolerance because the body's producing more heat, and rapid heart rate, sweating, hyperactivity, anxiety, and insomnia because of the effect of thyroid hormones on the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic overstimulation of muscles that control eye movements also makes the eyes appear more open than normal, so you see more of the white of the eyes. Thyroid storm, which is a life-threatening complication of hyperthyroidism where the body goes into a state of severe hypermetabolism, can develop when someone with hyperthyroidism stops their treatment, develops an infection, or has surgery. All of the normal symptoms of hyperthyroidism become exaggerated. For example, heat intolerance turns to high fever and rapid heart rate turns to cardiac arrhythmia. Diagnosing toxic multinodular goiter involves confirming hyperthyroidism by measuring blood levels of TSH, T3, and T4, and confirming the presence of multinodular goiter through ultrasonography. A radioiodine uptake test can also help identify independent nodules. The treatment for toxic multinodular goiter is usually done with beta blockers, and surgery can be used to remove part or all of the thyroid gland. Another option, radioiodine therapy, involves taking oral doses of radioactive iodine, which is absorbed by active follicular cells and over time damages them. This destroys hyperfunctioning nodules within the thyroid gland because radioiodine gets preferentially picked up by those nodules, leaving the rest of the gland intact. The long term use of thioamides, which are anti thyroid drugs which block thyroid hormone production and secretion, is typically only used when radioiodine therapy and surgery aren't appropriate options. Alright, as a quick recap, toxic multinodular goiter is a condition where the thyroid gland develops independently functioning nodules, which results in hyperthyroidism. It develops after prolonged iodine deficiency, which causes hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the thyroid gland. Continued follicular cell division can lead to a genetic mutation of the TSH receptor which turns a non-toxic multinodular goiter into a toxic multinodular goiter. Symptoms include an enlarged thyroid as well as the typical symptoms of hyperthyroidism, like weight loss, a rapid heart rate, and hyperactivity. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.